Hi guys, this is my post-match review for England against Wales game. Uh, sorry I didn't get a review out last night. I was um, had a few drinks in me, so uh, I wasn't really in the fittest of states to give a full match review for it. Uh, but I did see the game. Um, going back to doing reviews in my dressing gown, just like at the World Cup, I guess. But uh, let's talk about it. It was quite a crazy game, wasn't it? Um, lots to talk about. I don't think I'm going to pack it all into this one video, but... Let's get started, just go through the game and see what I think of it. First try for England came early on when off a line out, uh, passed back inside, Anthony Watson, uh, brilliant sidestepping, went over, scored uh, near the right corner, uh, Owen Farrell converted. Wales tried to get back into the game, got a bit of momentum and they managed to get a couple of penalties. It ended up being 10-6 and then England later on caught England, caught. Wales cold on the left-hand side. Elliot Daly went over, scored in the corner. Uh, but Wales managed to get back to 20 points to 9 at the break. And then at the start of the second half, Wales scored a magnificent try off the kickoff. Um, spotted some space um, on the open side of England. Went down the right, uh, passed it along. Brilliant passing. Went back inside. Justin Tipperick went and scored under the post. That was a fantastic try. Try of the tournament, without doubt. Got Wales back into the game a bit. But then they... England basically tore them apart at the scrums. Um, we're just all over them there for the most part, England. Uh, and then, then they just, like similar to what they did against Ireland in the second half, where they just dominated Ireland up front. They did the same to Wales here um, and eventually got the score to 33-16, um, which uh, culminated in a, it was two penalties from Farrell and then a two-alangi try uh, got them to 33-16. And then moments of controversy, last 10 minutes, Wales were um, pe peppering at the England line. England eventually got a yellow card for Ellis Genge after repeated infringement, no arguments for me. And then Manu Tulangi got his red card for bundling George North into touch, leading with the right shoulder into the head. Um, no arguments from me, I think that was a red card all day long with... Um, there might be folk, I know there's folk who disagree with me, is uh, Eddie Jones was making out like, you know, oh, we were 13 against 16, the ref was against us. And what was my Tulangi supposed to do? But if you actually look at him, the way he's leading in with the shoulder, I know George North is ducking, I can fully empathise with that, but if you lead in with a shoulder like that, you're running the risk. And I think it was the right decision not to award a penalty try because Henry Slade had just caught George North short and George North was going to ground. So I think Tuolangi could have maybe backed, I know he was running at full tilt, but he could have um, maybe tried to, like, maybe dived a bit more and gone for George North just below uh, the tops of the shoulders as best he could, possibly. Uh, but he didn't help himself at all the way. He just went in straight shoulder to head. He's running the risk there and... Uh, that's just the laws. The laws are the laws. They're the rules. The referees are told to be strict on them these days. So no gripes for the red card at all there. Uh, despite what feedback I might get get for that, it was a red card. And some folks saying like, oh, "What is he supposed to do?" But they're the they're the laws. You lead with the head, the shoulder. Any circumstances these days, you're running into trouble. So no complaints. But then. Wales got a try through Dan Bigger after that, after uh, England being down to 13 men. And then they got a try right at the end from Justin Tipperick, finished 33-30. Overall, a game that England deserved to win because they were the better side for the most part. Uh, they dominated Wales up front for the most part and they were a lot smarter than Wales throughout most of the game. Wales only seemed to get their clinical edge, apart from that Justin Tipperick try at the start of the second half. When England were down to 13 men, they started to, and only because they took uh, advantage of the two-man um, advantage, um, and that was, uh, but apart from that, they just, I don't know, they just look a bit um, rudderless at times. They have certainly lost that efficiency with doing the basics well, and as also um, efficiency in defence as well. Their defence seems to get a lot tighter and gets caught cold a lot more. And I think that happens when you're going from a game plan like a Warren Gatlin's into a Wayne Pivak's game plan where Warren, I'm going to compare it to like um, a football team, like Josie Mourinho's the manager, he gets sacked, he gets replaced by a Pep Guardiola or a Roberto Martinez, someone like that kind of manager who's um, com coming in off the back of um, a game plan that's more about being efficient, being aggressive and all about a solid foundations in defence, going into a game plan that uh, in the football sense is more about passing, using the ball well, uh, 
play, playing the ball about and keeping it on the, the deck. In this sense, it's about going from Warren ball, some might say, a, like a more direct style of rugby with the ball and absolute efficiency with doing the basics well, making sure you secure your own, secure your own ball. Uh, don't take an offload unless it's absolutely 100% on. Um, and uh, make sure you've got a very solid, aggressive defence, both at the breakdown and out wide. And then they go from that to this style of game, which is a lot different, a lot more about playing expansively, playing with enterprise, uh, make sure you keep the ball moving, look for the offloads, keep keep the opposition on their toes at all times, um, and keep the ball moving fast. And with that, you lose a bit of efficiency and in doing the basics and doing the hard donkey stuff a bit more, and that's where Wales are falling short right now. Now, that's not to say it can't get better for them, it will take time, but there are some areas where you think Dan Bigger, um, for me, is not the 10 for this kind of rugby uh, they want to play. I think da um, Gareth Amscombe, when he comes back, it would be a lot better. Even Reach Patchell would be a better choice, I think. Um, but, again, for Wales, I understand there's fans frustrated by it, and I get that, but it's just going to take a bit of time. But also... At international rugby, you need to have a good defence. And it's it saddens me on the personal level because I'm much more for giving the ball air and moving the ball around, ball in hand, uh, playing fast, expansive rugby. But with uh, how much um, rugby league influence has come into the game now, especially with the defence, um, it's all about how your defence is and the rush defence, which is so um, such a big thing in the modern game, it's all about how you get that right. That is more or less what wins and loses your matches at that level. So that's where Wales need to get back to bases, at least have a solid base in defence and because they're getting caught out either too narrow or there's one man like getting lost or they're missing tackles more than you'd expect them to and it just doesn't help them uh, and they need to get back to bases on the defensive side. From England's point of view, I think they can be pretty happy they got the win. A bit disappointed with the bonus point because they did have opportunities to get the four tries, but they didn't get it. Um, and they, But apart from a few wee things in the game, they were very decent. Um, they look close to where they were at the World Cup. I don't think they were as good as they were against um, the All Blacks, certainly. But there's certainly signs they've got, gotten better being back at Twickenham, doing well. But... Um, yeah, I think there's still a bit of improving to do. And Eddie Jones, there's some areas of his team he needs to evolve. Some players, I think Ben Youngs has passed it a bit, even though he had a decent game. He was man of the match, I think, uh, yesterday. But I think long term, I don't think he's the answer at nine. I'm still not wholly convinced by the George Ford and Owen Farrell 10-12 axis. I think it would be a lot better with Farrell at 10, uh, Tulangi at 12, and Slade at 13. That's my thoughts there. Obviously, everyone's entitled to disagree. I think... Um, I think on the back three, they're more or less all right, but they do need an out-and-out -out fullback. Elliot Daly is a very good rugby player, but I'm not convinced by him as a fullback. He has some games where he does very well, other games where he's not so good. Um, so that's something they need to look at there, I think. Um, and at number eight, I still think Tom Curry is better as a flanker, um, but even though Eddie Jones is persistent with him at eight, I would have thought... I said in my pre match video, I thought Mark Wilson would come in and go to eight because I think he's more effective carrier than C Curry. Even though Curry's doing, he's doing well, but I still think he's a lot better um, at flanker uh, doing what he does there. But um, yeah, so that's that's my thoughts there. And one wee thing with the whole thing that's going around uh, the internet right now with Joe Marler having a feel up of Alan Wynne Jones. Um, I get how folk can have a laugh about it. I mean, Gar what Gareth Thomas said at half time in the match was absolutely hilarious. Um, you know, sort of if we knew this was legal, I'd still be playing along those lines. It's funny, but at the same time, Alan Wynne Jones clearly didn't like it at all and. I'm absolutely fully supporting him that the um, World Rugby authorities need to step in here and they need to say, no, this is not on and Joe Marler should get a ban for it because it's not acceptable in the game. I mean, you're watching that from the outside. It doesn't look good at all um, generally. It's not an example to set to... Um, the set to the kids watching and also um, the average person out there who has had that sadly happen to them where they've been groped like that without consent it's not um it's not something we want in rugby so i think uh, 
a fair 12 to 18 week ban. That's about the law for um, a light to mid range of uh, grabbing of the genital areas. Um, even though it wasn't a full grab, it was more a light feel up, but still not not good, not on, and uh, Joe Muller should get a suspension. Anyway, that's all I've got to say on the game, guys. Uh, it's a very interesting game. Uh, a lot depends on uh, the Scotland-France game and obviously the France-Island game with regards to England's title chances. I think they're pretty much gone because they haven't picked up a bonus point in any of their three games they've won. But uh, we'll see what happens there. Obviously, their game against Italy has been postponed till another time. So um, that's going to be interesting to see what goes on there. That's all I've got to say, really, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I know this went on a bit, but I appreciate you uh, sticking around and listening to my videos. It really, really helps me. It really does. But take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you later on.